Hunt. I'm Stephanie Wainwright. I'm a wife, a mom, a business owner, and my life is chaotic all the time. So I created this podcast to help you find the funny, the good, while navigating through the chaos. This is Chaotic Compass Podcast. It is that time of the week where you join me and listen to me either complain or drink or whatever. Hi guys, it's Stephanie, Chaotic Compass Podcast. Thanks for tuning in. Um, I feel like every time I get on here, it's me complaining and drinking. Like, that's what I'm here for. And I appreciate you tuning in. And I know that if you were sitting here with me, we would be drinking together. Because we're besties now. Like, that's where we're at. You guys have joined in every single episode. And you... It's like we're sitting in our living room. Like, my living room just hanging out. And we're drinking. And that's that's what I'm trying to get this vibe going for. (sighs) I... I don't know if you guys watch Rachel Hollis. I I, I kind of was like obsessed with her for a while and then I kind of got off the bandwagon. But I watch her rage talks on YouTube. So basically it's her drinking caffeinated beverages and talking about the random things. So that's where I get this inspiration from. It's literally me with an alcoholic beverage of whatever talking about my life complaints at the moment so (laughs) i would really love to hear your your complaints if you have one if you have several whatever you've got just send it over to me go check out my website there's not a whole lot there except for all my podcast episodes which you already listened to obviously and you know it's chaoticcompass.com and you can submit a form or whatever i don't even know like I don't even know the technical term, but you can submit an inquiry and you can put your, your complaint, your story, your whatever. And I can share it here. I can talk about it. I'd love to analyze it. Kind of like a dear Annie. That'd be nice. But here I am. Another week. Another month. Another year. Another whatever of just... I feel like I keep just complaining. I feel like I've turned into this person of just B-worditude. I don't want to say it because I know like people have kids in the car and they listen to this. And I, my own daughter listens to this, so I try to keep it as PG as possible. But it's PG-13 because she's almost a teenager, so it is what it is. But today I want to talk about... I'm recapping some stuff, right? Some stupid, stupid stuff. And, like, I can't even wrap my head around it, okay? So, our boat, our big fishing boat that we take all the people out on, and literally it's where I get my paycheck from, has not only been hit once by another vessel, but has been hit twice within, like, four days of each other. First time... Saturday night, we're getting ready to take some people out for our evening trip, you know, sunset cruise. We haven't loaded them up yet. Another boat comes in and loses kind of control. The tide's rolling in and they can't keep it under control. And they, and my boat, our boat, is already sitting at the dock. It's not underway. It's not, it's sitting still. And it's massive. We're a 65 foot headboat. I mean, it's massive. Okay. And runs into it. And not just runs into it. Literally pongs its way down. All the way down the side of it. The whole port side has these lovely boat marks all the way down. It's beautiful. It's great. Nothing severe. It is what it is. Um, We canceled that evening trip just to kind of get an assessment. I haul the kids, all the lovely children, down in in the car, down to the boat. They go play on the playground. Luckily, there's a playground at the marina. And... Ryan slapping 4,200, which is, if you don't know, the boat world is kind of like a staple. Basically, some awesome cock 
into the seam. And it's above the waterline, so it's not horrible, but... <sighs> that was the littlest of it. And then, that was a Saturday night, and then a Wednesday night after, we, in the morning, were, or no, Wednesday night. It's a Wednesday morning after, and we are taking 14 passengers fishing that morning, and uh, set up to do a drift, and another sailboat runs into the back of her. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. You know, like, when you're in an accident, you just, you pull over, and you get each other's information, and... Sorry about your bad luck, and we're just going to let insurance do get out. No, this guy decides to, because he hit us so hard, he's stuck. Gets unstuck from our vessel, pulls off, screams over the VHF, I'm a sailboat, I have the right away. The whole time my captain's like, what? You hit us so hard, it rammed me into the helm it's not a windy day i had to yell at you to turn off your engines therefore you are not a sailboat under maritime law you guys so if you don't know sailboats do have the right of way because they kind of can't control it they they have to go off of the wind and so you just you back off you let them do their thing no this guy claims my boat who only goes seven knots, which is turtle style in boat world, Max overtook his boat, cut in front of him, and pulled off the throttle. Right? My captain's saying he pulled off the throttle, was setting up for a drift. He looked around. This boat's at least a half a mile to his stern, is fine. And should have enough time to, you know, if he needs to go around, should have enough time, right? Wrong. Ran into the frickin' back of us. Tore off a huge chunk of my stern handrail. Like, I can post some pictures. It's brutal. Like, just, just the whole time I'm like, what? What? My cat, you know, my captain had called me after he had reported it to the Coast Guard. You know, the guy had drove off, right? You know, not checking to see if anything's fine. So he had to report, you know, one, we're underway with passengers, so we need to report it. But two, the guy drove off. So he's like, oh, I need some help tracking this guy down because he just ran to the back of me and bailed. <clears throat> after he reported it, he gives me a call. Hey, um, so, you know, we were just in an accident and the whole time I'm like, seriously, are you kidding me? There's got to be a bullseye on this damn boat. But he's like, yeah, you know, uh, we, it, it is, it is what it is. Nobody was injured. We're not taking on water. Um, you know, I just want to know, should we come back in? And I'm thinking because he's so nonchalant, right? He's no, like, just like, it's no big deal. Like, oh, okay, cool. It's cool. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, let me let me see some pictures of what you're looking at. But I mean, if if it's not a big deal, then you know you you should keep fishing. Get off the phone. He sends me some pictures, and it's like, oh my god, what? You should have never asked me. That shouldn't have been a thought. Whole half of the stern hand. We're we're eighteen foot wide, so there's a good. Nine foot plus some more. The whole corner stern rail is missing. So that's just a hazard. We're going to lose somebody overboard, right? And then you look at the pictures of the actual stern. There's a sailboat dent in the back of it. I have no idea how we weren't taking on water. I have no idea. It's a wooden boat, guys. Okay. <laughs> you want to you wanna get, you want to do something fun. You guys should buy a wooden boat. It's so much fun. Oh my gosh. Like you should just totally like just find one on eBay and just do it. <laughs> yeah. Nobody like disclose this. This isn't in the fine print. So I tell him, yeah, man, you, you need to come back in. You, you need to come back in and we need to make sure everybody on board is fine. Hampton 
you know, police department, Hampton Fire Department was there meeting people on board just to make sure they were fine. The Marine police were there. Coast Guard finally showed up that afternoon with an investigator. Ooh, that's always fun. A little, little investigation. <laughs> You guys, I have never felt so many emotions at the same time. Like, I am just devastated. My, my, I'm in the middle. Of, it's, but it's July. And then by the time this post, it'll be, you know, August. But it's July. That's my season. I'm in the midst of it. <laughs> and I'm, I'm ruined. This is my season. I'm devastated. I just came off of 2020 trying to figure out what the hell is going on last year. And then I get into 2021 and it's literally like hold my beer. Ryan and I keep saying that to each other. We were driving down the road the other day. Side note. We were driving down the road the other day and saw a, um, a literal dump truck that was on fire. People are slowing down on both, you know, north and southbound. I get the... I get the southbound, but the northbound, what we were in, guys, we lived through 2020. It was a whole dumpster fire. This is nothing new. You should be used to seeing dumpster fires. Like, keep driving. Keep rolling. Like, what are we doing here? Oh, my God. 2021 was like, hold my beer. And here we are. So, I'm going to drink this drink, and then I'm going to pop open my new drink here. Hold on. You guys, okay. Let me pop this out of the, uh, I got awesomeness. This is my favorite drink right here. And this makes me excited. Okay. Sly Clyde has sandbar. Check it. Lemonade, raspberry or raspberry lemon, whatever. In a can. Cider. Hello. It's so pretty in a can. It's orange and red and yellow and it's just pretty and it's just a summertime awesomeness. I didn't even realize that they had started canning it again. And because, you know, I got some time off now because, you know, the boat's not running. And so this past weekend, my husband and I, we ran away to Ocracoke, which is, you know, a good five hour drive away, but we ran away. Like, like got in the car and... Snoop dogged it up and just got the heck out of town on my way down because we need to stock up, right? You got to stock up. So we stopped at, you know, the store down there and shout out to Connors in Hatteras Village. Okay, their prices are a little much, but they're so cute. They've been there forever. They had this. Sly Clyde is in Hampton, Virginia here. And in Hatteras, North Carolina, they had Sly Clyde. And three kinds, obviously, Submersive, which is their staple. They had the Inkjet, which is their, I don't even know, some kind of mint. Berry mint. And they had this. They had the the sandbar. So this is this is my jam, you guys. This makes my heart happy. And so when I've got like a horrible, horrible, you know, poop sandwich that I had to eat this past week. And I didn't even eat it. I didn't even touch it. I just ran away in pure coward style. But here we go. Yes. So Sandbar Raspberry Lemon comes in 12 ounce cans. Um, they come in a four pack. Uh, you can either, I think you can actually get them on Amazon. I think Whole Foods, they partnered up with Whole Foods and like you can get them delivered to you. Uh, check it out. Definitely worth it. Sly Clyde, check it out. But oh my gosh, Raspberry Lemon. It is 6.7% alcohol. So for a cider, it's potent. Usually two, I'm good. Three, good night. I love these. They're so yummy and it's just the perfect summertime drink and it's it's my fave. It makes my heart happy. So I drink because all the emotions, all of the things. And I can't process any of them because when I start to think too hard about it, I <clears throat> I start to cry and it just comes out and I just I can't. So it's not healthy. 
and it's not the right way to do it and I don't recommend it. But if you're looking for a summer awesome drink, this is it. Okay. Sly Clyde is my fave. Check it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we ran away this weekend, you know, because it happened on a Wednesday. Had to get the Coast Guard's approval to move the boat up to the boat yard and did that on Friday. I didn't. I'd had people do that, but got the boat to where it needed to be. And I'm thinking, okay, so Ryan, my husband, met with their guy up there and, um, you know, talked about all the repairs that should be needed. And I'm thinking, okay, Monday morning, Monday, I should have an estimate, right? I had to call them. It was like noon. We called them. Hey, we, we need to get an estimate over to our insurance company to get the ball rolling. And they're like, okay, all right. So yeah, we'll, we'll try to get that to you as soon as possible. Y'all, they sent me a one-liner. A one-liner. Labor materials is going to be this much. My insurance company was like, the fuck? I mean, I'm like, you're not wrong. I don't, I, I have no idea what they're doing. So, I mean, what am I supposed to do? I said, hey, I need an estimate and like, this is the best they can do because they're out in the middle of nowhere and they're not going to freaking detail every freaking thing. And they're just like, hey, it's going to cost this much, I think. So here you go. My insurance company, like, no, that doesn't work for us. We're going to need some details. And so here's this 20 line item thing of everything that I need quotes on. All right. And so I send that back over to them and I keep, I, I actually just spoke to them today and they were like, the boat yard was like, mm, yeah, um, so that's a lot. They need like a lot. And they've had this, you know, by the way, for a couple of days. Yeah, we, I just need to get, you know, my boss to sit down and, and be able to do that. But he's just so busy. He's got like a bunch of other jobs going on. I know people are busy, right? Like, because, you know, the workforce has been cut and people are struggling and I get it. But you're the ones that told me on Thursday. Yeah, you know, I, it took me a while to, to find, you know, labor and I've got it. And so you guys, you just bring the boat on. And I'm on top of that. In their one-liner quote estimate. They're like, yeah, we're going to need $20,000 up front. What? You never said that. You never said that on the way up there. I literally just paid a bunch of money to credit cards. Like, I usually keep a, a few thousand dollars in the bank just to, to meet payroll. And I keep plugging away at, at the racked up debt we've occurred just to get through the off season. Excuse me? You never said. You you didn't say crap about that. I'm sorry. So now here we are. Yay! So you need 20000 to even just touch the boat. I need you to just do a, a quote so the insurance will get their stuff together. And then there's the magical unicorn of the Coast Guard needs to have it all pulled apart so they can take a look at the inside and see what needs to be done. And then I got to submit a repair proposal for them to agree to. I know. I lost you. I'm complaining, right? This is a whole lot of detail and a whole lot of crap that you don't care about. But I'm telling you right now, look, look, I tell you right now, this is some crap. And I'm so over the crap sandwiches. I keep getting handed crap sandwiches and I don't know what karma that I have put out there in the world, but I'm about over it. Okay. I said it today. We have this guy that calls into the office a lot, like usually on a weekly basis, looking for a fishing report. I've tagged him in my contact. So I know when he's coming to set aside at least 20 minutes of my time. He called today and I'm on the verge of tears when he called and I didn't answer specifically because I know when this guy, I have to have a ton of patience, which I don't. I don't have the patience for anybody right now. And it's going to be guys like that that are going to get it. 
I think Ryan said it the other day, like, I wish somebody would break into our house and, like, they would just get everything. Like, I would pummel them to the ground and then every frustration <laughs> would come out on top of them, just beat them to a pulp and, like, that's how I feel. I feel like one poor person just gonna ask the wrong question <laughs> at the wrong time and it's typically, unfortunately, it's... It's typically my husband. Like, he's going to ask because he's in close proximity and he's, like, dealing with it with me. And he's going to ask the wrong question at the wrong time. And I swear, I just know it. I'm just going to just start windmilling his butt and just, like, going to town. And it's not going to make me feel any better, but it's going to make me feel any better. But I'm probably going to end up in jail and I don't go look good in orange. So, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> there's that other thing it's like oops sorry <laughs> I murdered you <laughs> you know like girls do that right I don't know maybe it's just me and the random chicks that I hang out with but I feel like my sister has like accidentally ran over a curb and she didn't drive she doesn't drive a big vehicle I think it was in her little Kia Sonata I don't know whatever the little car that the Kia has it was like She's driving in Walmart and accidentally hits a curb. And it's like, oops. <laughs> oops. You just lost a bumper back there and a hubcap. Like, what the heck? <laughs> like, oops, I just hit a person. <laughs> oops, I just committed murder. <laughs> no big deal. <laughs> oh, my God. That's what it's going to be like. <laughs> oops, I murdered somebody. I'm just, just waiting for it. Like... The amount of emotions that I have right now. So it's like I've got complete despair and disappointment and sadness over here. And then it's like anger and just like pure rage of like I can't control a dang thing right now. I can't control. I have to put it into the boatyard and the insurance's hands right now. I'm trying to do the best I can but nobody's in a hurry. And then there's the comical factor of what the hell is going on? Like, I kind of just want to like laugh and just, I don't know. It's going to start out as a laugh and then I'm just going to be in the fetal position crying my eyes out on the floor. I really haven't cried. And I was expecting, so this is, I was really expecting when I saw the boat. Like I had that, that morning they got back to the dock and I, I raced down there with Kylie down there to see the boat. And I'm thinking, okay, all right, Kylie, I need for you to hang out in the car or go to the playground or something because mom, mom needs a minute. And I was expecting to just in front of the, you know, the captain that we've got on the boat is new in front of our mate, in front of my husband, in front of God, everybody, like everybody was just going to see me just break down. Right. But I didn't. I didn't. I was expecting that. And I didn't. I didn't cry. I didn't freak out. It's just like, okay, all right, who needs what? And that's the mode I've been in. Like, the Coast Guard had this laundry list of things that they needed. Like, okay, we need statements from everybody. We need a work rest history of 96 hours out. We need this. We need that. We need the data off the chart plotter. Um, do you know our chart plotter is, like, from 2008? <laughs> It's really not that easy. It's kind of one of those, you know, I can send it up in smoke signals. Probably easier than to try to get it off of that thing. But everybody needs something, right? So I've just been in like, get it done mode. And now I'm kind of getting to that point where it's like, I'm doing my best to get it done and nobody else is doing that, right? Or at least I feel like, I know. It's 2021 and everybody's struggling and I shouldn't think like that. But that's where my brain goes. That's where, that's where I'm at. And I don't understand the words. For me, all of these emotions are like all at the same time. And I know that I'm going to reach my breaking point because I haven't processed any of them. And I'm trying to find the, the, find the good. Find the good, right? Okay? I'm thinking, okay, so 
my insurance company doesn't cover loss of revenue because that's wicked expensive and we just don't carry that. And so I'm going to be able to get all of the money to fix my mo my boat and then some. And then I'm going to have to go after the other guy because he's totally at fault. This is ideal land. Don't like. And I'm going to be able to get all that money and everything's going to be fine. Right? Like, it's fine that it's almost August and it's our season and 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 <laughs> what I keep looking at the whole picture right I'm trying to like get the whole picture right and I'm not seeing it I'm not seeing it because I can't get past these weeds mm. like but trying to find the good and there is no, there is no good right now. There is none. There, there is zero good. And I know I keep preaching that to you guys and I'm, and I'm struggling. Okay. I'm struggling and I'm admitting that and I'm sorry, but okay. What if everything goes to plan. I get the money for the repairs. I get the money for lost revenue from the other guy because he is at fault and my insurance company goes after him and I keep all of my employees employed and everything works out and I've made at least a decent August. I get back up and running and August is killer because I have do, I do have so many customers that are like, we're ready for it whenever you get back. Because, you know, this isn't our first rodeo with, because in two, yeah, 2012, we, uh, and I wasn't witness to this. In 2012, I was largely pregnant in June with my son and I was on bed rest. So I was not a part of this company. I was in a relationship with another man. I had no idea what the Ocean Eagle even was. But in 2012, a uh, or tornado came through where the boat was docked and uh, ripped the uh, ropes that were tied onto the boat right off. And they're tied onto the, the these, you know, like six by sixes, or I don't even know really what they are, four by four. They're tied onto these posts and rip the post right out of the boat and, you know, massive hole. $70,000 worth of work. And we have customers that have been through that with us. You know, we're here for you. Like, we're going to be, you made it through that. You're going to come out stronger just like you did in 2012. And we're here for it. We're ready when you are. Like that. <sighs> That's loyalty. That's that's so much, you know, amazingness. And I wish that I could just cultivate that in every single one of our customers so I can know that when I say green light, that everybody's going to be ready to go. The blessing is I do have the other boat and I do have somewhat of some kind of income coming in, but it's not enough to pay the bills. I'm trying. But it's brutal. Every time I say brutal, my daughter comes at me, you know, with a, some kind of song. Oh, God, it's brutal out here. I don't even know the name of the song or who sang it, but I'm trying. And it's not working. So if you have some amazing techniques on how to deal with anxiety, how to deal with all the emotions, how to deal with the pressure of owning a business, working in a business, and all the things, wearing all the hats, all of it. Let me know. ChaoticCompass.com. Check it out. You guys, I would much rather talk about you and your stuff, and I would really like, like to pick it apart. I'm good at looking at other people's stuff and seeing the good. I can do that. My friends are here for it. I'm here for you. I can see that. I help my husband out a ton with that. He probably doesn't listen to it, but it's fine. But when it comes to my own poop, I really have a hard time. 
So if you see a way to get out of this, not really get out of this, or a way to just like push through and like be better and awesome and see the good and like I just want to feel better. I keep telling my husband that. I just want to feel better. I just want to feel better. Like I just want to stop doom and gloom and like what else is around the corner and so I know I've got like crappy ass koozie on here but I'm trying I'm trying to see the good but when somebody rams your boat like damn y'all do you see the good in that I don't know maybe like stay tuned maybe there's good coming up in the next week's episodes but so today, I don't know if there's good. The sandbar was good. I'm here for that. Like, it gave me the chance to get away with my husband for two days in Ocracoke, no less, and ride bikes and drink sandbar, spend too much money on alcohol. I mean, seven fifty for a draft seltzer, y'all. Get it together. But... And in a week and a half, we get to go on vacation. Stay tuned, guys. I appreciate it. I'm trying. A thunderstorm is getting ready to roll through, and I know it's going to be difficult to hear if uh, we got skylights in here. As you can, if you're on my YouTube, you can see behind me. So, have a great night. I appreciate you listening to me. Find the good in your life. Find the positive. Find the funny. I'm here for it. I know there's good out there. Send me yours. Or send me your struggles. We can talk about it. Cat at compass.com. Talk to you again. Bye. Thanks for listening to another episode of Chaotic Compass Podcast. We appreciate it. And if you would like to get notifications, please subscribe and tell all your friends. See you next time.